Yum, yum! Greg here from Pixel Fondue. Somebody asked me to do some displaced terrain and volumetric fog in Octane for Moto. So here it is. We've got a displaced terrain, as you can see. We're rendering in the Octane viewport. And if I just take a look at uh, my perspective view over here, you'll see that this is just a plane that is actually sub deed. Let me go to shaded mode here. It's just a sub deed plane, right? Subdivided and sub deed to Catmull Clark sub Ds to get this nice displacement shading over here. The actual network, uh, shading network, I will go through really quickly. We just have a diffused material on the train and a gray color, very exciting. And a displacement node that you get right over here. So if I were to not have this hooked up, I would say new displacement and I would just plug that in like that. And there I have it. And then you can plug a texture into the texture. You can plug, you know, any of these, you know, generators like a sine wave or a marble or noise or checkerboards or whatever into the texture or an image. In this case, I'm using an image that I got off the internet and it's just an 8-bit grayscale image. So you'll notice some stair-stepping there. That's because an 8-bit image, as you all know, because you are graphics experts, only has 2 to the power of 8 levels of brightness. So 256 levels of, of brightness isn't a lot in terms of a uh, displacement map, right? So you get this stair steppy effect. That's why you use 16 or 32-bit images for displacement. But because this is just a tutorial and I'm lazy and got this off the internet, that's what you get. Anyway, so let's take a look at the displacement node really quick because there's a few options here we can look at. Um, first of all, the height. Uh, we'll just bump that up to two. First thing you'll notice is Octane is just blazingly fast with displacement. I mean, it's basically instantaneous. It's pretty crazy. I'm not even sure how they do it. But they do, and it's super fast and super high quality, and there you go. So that's the height. Um, Mid-level, oh, well, level of detail first. So this is interesting because this will depend in part on your, the resolution of your image map. So you want a high resolution image map to begin with, and you want to match this kind of up roughly with your image map. If I go lower, maybe for like a distant object, you'll see that the uh, quality level goes uh, down the drain. <laughs> Um, I don't know why you'd necessarily ever want to do this in case maybe you're low on RAM or something. I mean, it may look okay like at 2048. So maybe you're running low on RAM and you do that, but really you want it as, as high as you can get it, right, for the highest level of quality in terms of level of detail. And middle level is kind of interesting. If I look through the camera here and pull back, right now the middle level is at zero. Basically that means every brightness level above black is going to push the polygons up. And if I put that at 0.5, it's going to take, you know, everything above 0.5 is going to go up and everything below 0.5 is going to go down. So, you know, that's the middle level. If I go all the way up to 1, it's just going to push everything down, right, with black being the farthest down. So that's how mid-level works, and you may want to use that depending on the type of displacement you're doing. Um, if you're doing uh, backpacks or shoes or something like that, and you're displacing threads and things like that, maybe you want to do a different mid-level. Terrain's fine with a mid-level of 0, so we'll just keep it there. Finally, the filter type, you can blur this out a bit if you want to. So, you know, I can go to like a box filter or a Gaussian filter. Box is a little faster. So if I go to box, and this, this does take a bit longer to calculate, but you can see it's sort of blurred here. If I pump this up, I get, uh, you know, pretty, I, I lose my stair steps basically, but now it looks like um, somebody poured hot wax all over my terrain, which I don't really like. So I'm going to turn filtering off. I don't know that you normally need that, but it's an option that's there if you need if you need it, and uh, it's cool. Okay, let's move on to fog. That was easy enough. So let me go back to my empty workspace. Fog is actually really easy. It's just not intuitive. So you need three things. You need a container mesh, which I'm going to press in, get an empty mesh here. I'm going to rename that. Um, we'll just call it container mesh or some weird gibberish because my fingers are in the wrong place. Container Cointainer, container, mesh, okay, great. And then I'm going to add an item and I'm going to say volley, whoops, don't want my toolbox up here. I want volume, I want the um, standard moto volume item. We need that, boom. Okay, whoop, don't need two of them. I don't need that locator either. Um, yes, and then I also, the third thing I need is a VD, VDB, VDB voxel item. So three things, a VDB voxel item, a volume item, and a mesh to contain or set the boundaries of the VDB voxel. So I'm just going to create, press F2, control click the unit cube, press 3 for polygon mode, 
And I'm going to create a container here for our fog. I'm just going to enclose or encompass the train. Go to uh, wireframe. Good enough. Good enough for government work, as they say. I don't want texture locators. Um, OK, and then I'm going to drop all three of these things into the schematic. So I've got my container mesh on the left, my volume on the right, and my VDB voxel in the middle. And then very simply, I'm going to go container mesh to VDB voxel source and VDB voxel to voxel source. Again, not super intuitive, but this is going to work. OK, so I've got uh, one more thing I need to do. Now, if I t take a look at this and I select my VDB voxel, you see it's there in the scene. You get some density around this container. If I were to move my container, my uh, voxel is going to go with it, right? So that's how that works. And then I'm going to turn my container off. I don't want it visible to the Octane camera, so I'm going to turn it off. And then I'm going to select my volume item, and I'm going to right click and say Shade Create Item Mask. And this is going to tell me to restart Octane, which I'm going to do. So I'm going to restart Octane. And you'll see that it goes kind of black. And what that is is some fog. So we've got fog. Now we need to do a couple of things to adjust the properties of the fog. First of all, the, the standard mode of volume item has volumetric uh, channels on it. And you might think that you, these are the things you want to adjust. They are not. These are not going to translate to octane. None of these are going to matter. They're not going to do anything. Ignore them. We're going to use the volume channels in the material. That's why we created the item mask for it. Item volume. So this material is affecting the volume. I don't need to do any sort of translation to octane materials. It's just going to understand the volume channels. I like to zero these guys out. I don't think it matters, but I like to zero all that stuff out. So there's no shading. And if you go down here to um, material rays, you'll see a volumetrics uh, bunch of channels here for volumetrics. These are what we want. So first off, um, you'll notice that it's really dark and the density is 100% and that is why. So if I dial that way back to like 1%, you'll see that I've lost my super thick San Francisco fog and I'm down to a nice London fog. Actually, I have no idea who has worse fog. More of a smog. Let's call this a Shanghai smog effect. That looks good. Okay, so absorption. So we got a few different parameters here. Scattering color. Um, this will actually, you know, tint the volume this color. So if I want this sort of a sunsetty looking thing, I'm going to tint it over here in the yellow orange, and you see that coming in here. And then you have absorption color, which now remember because it's absorption, you want to make it the opposite color of what you want to show on screen. So if I want it to show green, I'm going to tell it to absorb magenta, and voila, I have green. Now it's nuclear Shanghai, but I don't want green. I actually want blue because I want to get this sort of sunsetty color in there, right? So we get some nice sunsetty colors there. Um, luminosity works as well. So I mean, if I were to crank this up, you know, it, it sort of thickens it a little bit. Um, of course, I could change this color as well. So you have a fair amount of control of, of how you want this to look. What you don't really have control over is any sort of density fall off. It's just a standard density all the way through. Uh, but yeah, it looks pretty good. Um, you know, we can bump this up just a little bit. And there you go. That's the basics of it. Now you can do things like I just have the Octane Physical Sky Daylight Environment going on here. If you don't know about this, let me just drag this so it stays up for a second. Um, this is my distance light in the scene. And I want to have the physical sun checkbox active here on uh, distant light. That gives me the opportunity to do things like change the time of day. Here we're getting more sunset -y looking lighting here, maybe 19. And I could do things like change the offset to, you know, like 180 or, you know, whatever, get different. Uh, let me see what I can get in the back there. Maybe 90. I think opposite of 90, which is 270. So now I've got it sort of backlit and I can probably bring the sun down a bit more like sunset and uh, you can also adjust the sun size over here. I have it pretty big. I think it's one but uh, it turned up to eight and you can actually see the sun in here if I can get the um, 
the uh, angle correct, you can actually just select the north offset and make sure you're in item mode, press C, you get the uh, channel hall, and just drag until you see it coming in here. Oh, there it is, so there's my sun. And it will do volumetric shadows within the volume with you know the sun well. In fact, if I, it's not gonna be so visible with this distance light, although it, it should work if I get the sun behind the mountains, you should get some volumetric light rays there. You can also use this technique to create underwater fog, which I did in this animation here. Here comes the shark. As it comes out of the fog, it gets a little more clear right there. There's a little bit of volumetric lighting you can see as well from the area lights that are lighting the back of this in the scene. Um, yeah, anyway, there it is. Displaced terrain and volumetric fog and Octane Fermoto. Yum, yum!